I see a lot of data analytics portfolios that look like this, this, and this, and trust me, none of these are gonna cut it in today's job market. And I'm gonna tell you why. This is part two of my killer data analytics portfolio series where I show you the entire process from A to Z of how to build a portfolio that'll set you apart from 99% of candidates. In the previous episode, I showed you the three projects that every person needs to have in their data analytics portfolio. And today I'm gonna show you the top six mistakes that people make in their data analytics portfolios that get them immediately cut and turned down by hiring managers. I'm gonna walk you through six best bad data analytics portfolios from real people and tell you exactly what I would change about them. Because sometimes it's helpful to understand what not to do in order to understand what you need to do. Also, just to keep it real with y'all, a little disclaimer, all of these portfolios are posted publicly. I found them online and I found different mistakes that I wanna highlight in each one, but in no way am I shaming anybody's work here. I think everybody here did a great job overall. I'm just gonna get super nitpicky so we can all learn what mistakes to avoid. So if I've accidentally grabbed your public portfolio, I'm sorry, but also you're welcome for the free feedback. The first huge mistake that people make in their portfolios is that they just drop a bunch of code somewhere and don't actually explain what they did. So honestly, just looking at this website, first impression, it kind of looks like I'm going to get a computer virus from being on this website. So hopefully I don't. And this is the reason why I tell people just build your portfolio on GitHub because you don't need to make a fancy website. Like we are not web page website designers. We're data analysts. So don't force yourself into a skill set you don't have building a website. Otherwise, it's just going to look very basic and not present you in the way that you want to look. So overall, my first impression is not super great here. Okay, there's an overview. I do think that's a plus. And then we have a result summary. And the result summary is literally just two visualizations. They're both very confusing and very 3D. We honestly want to avoid 3D visualizations whenever possible. But the biggest issue is that there's no explanation. It just has some images and no explanation as to what was discovered or what was done. So now I'm going to scroll down a little bit into like the main part of the project. I love that they did show the objectives, but now we have just like a bunch of code, more code, visualizations, more code, tables, more code. I don't see any markdown cells or any explanation as to what they did. I do see a few spur erratic code comments, which of course are great. But what I think would really take this to the next level is by actually putting in markdown cells with text and actually explaining what you're doing as you're doing it. Because no one just wants to read through a bunch of code. And it's honestly really hard for me to tell what the process is, what they're doing, what skills they're using. It would honestly just be way better if they kept the code as kind of, you know, separate, like not the main focus of the portfolio. And they actually had a bunch of text and paragraphs, not long paragraphs, but you know, short little snippets of everything they're doing throughout their process and why. That would tell me a lot more about their knowledge and their style as a data analyst. So I'm gonna give this portfolio a five out of 10. I do like that they have one project in one separate section like this. I do like how they have their objectives, but they just dumped a bunch of code in here and didn't explain any of it. And they didn't even explain any of the results. Plus it kind of looks like I'm gonna get a computer virus by being on this webpage. In this job market, having a really good portfolio is the only way to get hired. And if you want my step-by-step -step blueprint to build a portfolio to get a six-figure data analyst job, grab my 100K data portfolio blueprint below. Mistake number two is using super cliche, overdone data sets and projects. Okay, I'll be honest, this webpage does look pretty professional. Okay, except these blurry images. These blurry images just are giving a really bad first impression. And I also noticed we have the IMD sentiment analysis for movie reviews. I mean, come on, this project is honestly up there with like Titanic, Iris, COVID-19. 19. Like those data sets have just been done so many times. You're not standing out. Anybody can do these projects. So not only are you not standing out and not being memorable, I think it also leaves a lot of questions with hiring managers because there are so many free projects out there on these super basic, classic, cliche data sets that it's hard to say that you actually did the analysis on your own versus just stealing someone else's project online, which is why I think it's better to do something a little more creative and original and meaningful because it means that you didn't copy and paste it from somewhere else. You actually did it on your own. I also don't see a readme page in this repository. So there's really no other information other than this file. They don't have any sort of readme page with like all the information about the project. So it's already not really standing out to me. Okay, yeah, we've got lots of code, very little explanation, not a lot of summary and word clouds. 
Okay, well, this project gets a four out of 10 because they did put it in GitHub, which I think is great. It has its own repository, but there's no readme page. There's no explanation, no summary, no comments. And it's a super classic cliche overused data set. So four out of 10, sorry. The third big mistake that people make in their portfolios is that they don't use a separate repository in GitHub for each project. So I do think this person did a really good job organizing everything, which is why I feel bad about using it as a bad example. Example, they have everything organized and linked, which I think is great, but they just dumped all of their projects and information into one readme page in the same repository and used an entire repository as their portfolio instead of putting each individual project into a different repository. With all of these different projects, imagine how much more organized it would be if every project had its own repository and each repository had the corresponding readme page and Python files, SQL code, Excel files, etc. Plus, they also have a lot of super cliche data sets too. So we have the classic movies data set. We have a housing data set, the COVID data set. And I don't know why, but lately people have been obsessed with a Pokemon data set and I don't know why. So I'm going to give this person a seven out of 10 because they did use GitHub. They made a readme page. It is super organized. There's a little intro about them. Everything is linked and super organized, but I just don't think it's doing anything super extra for them. I think it's an okay portfolio, but I think to go to the next level, they need to separate all of these projects into a different repository and organize things in there. And that would also give them more space to talk about the project and provide more information into the context and the business recommendations and the impact and all that good stuff. So seven out of 10, not the worst, but definitely not the best. The fourth big mistake that I see in portfolios is a lack of storytelling. Storytelling is something you have to do in data with visualizations, but also your words. You have to kind of set up the problem, talk about how you solved it, and then talk about the results and the business recommendations recommendations. It's kind of that end to end thinking of how you solve this entire problem from beginning to end and then what you recommend going forward. And you have to storytell it to dumb it down for people who aren't data people and who are non-technical stakeholders. So again, I don't know why so many people are obsessed with making their own website. Like that is so unnecessary. And this website just looks very basic. Like don't make a website unless you have really good website skills, because I think it just doesn't do anything for you. I do like that they have things linked. It's fairly organized. That's a plus. We have the code link here as well, but I'm just not seeing any sort of storytelling. This is just like a homepage, basically. There's no business problem. There's no results, no recommendations and no visualizations. So the fact that a hiring manager would have to click on all of the code links to actually understand what the project is, what you did, what you accomplished and what the impact was, that's just a lot of work. A lot of hiring managers are not going to do that, but I am going to open this up. Okay. I do think they have good explanation here in the markdown. They're actually explaining kind of what they're doing and their thought process. I think that's great. We have some statistics, but we honestly don't have any visualizations, no executive summary. So I just think it's missing a big storytelling element. I'm going to give this portfolio a seven out of 10. It's not the worst website I've ever seen. And I do like how they have everything super organized. They do have markdown. So they're actually explaining their code and what they're doing. But I think to go to the next level, I think they need more storytelling, more visualizations and more business thinking. I think actually actually tying it back to a business and having it more easily accessible, like on the homepage, I think that would help them stand out more. So the hiring managers don't have to go dig into each individual file. I think having more storytelling on the front on the homepage would actually do a lot for them because hiring managers won't have to go into each individual file to kind of dig and see what they did. So I think if they had visualizations and clear storytelling and results kind of upfront, I think it would really help them stand out more. So not the worst portfolio I've ever seen, but needs a little work, seven out of 10. The fifth mistake mistake that I see in data analytics portfolios, which is kind of a no brainer. It's a very trivial thing, but people forget about this is technical issues and broken links. I cannot tell you how many times I've clicked on people's portfolios and the link doesn't work. The link is invalid. The source has been moved or it's a link that's not a public link and I have to request access to it. People test your links on a private browser beforehand and make sure they actually work. Again, we have another ugly website that is just not doing anything for this person. I I do like that they have a clear summary of the scope of work, everything they did. I do think it's missing storytelling and business skills, visualizations. I don't wanna to have to go dig through all of these links to find all of that. But the biggest problem here is that these links don't even work. It says this item won't load right now. And then when I go, it takes me to the Microsoft homepage.
which is not helpful. That's not gonna get you a job. And as a hiring manager, I would honestly be so annoyed. I'd be like, do I request access or do I just move on to a different candidate who sent me over decent material? So I just think it gives a really bad first impression, even though it's something so simple, like a link not working. It's, just, it's such an easy mistake to make, but it just shows that you didn't do your due diligence and test it out beforehand. I'm gonna give this person a one out of 10 because they did list out the scope of work and the skills that they used, but I do think the website is not the most appealing and I, I can't even view any of their work because none of these links work. So sorry, one out of 10. And the sixth mistake that I see in data analytics portfolios is not connecting the projects to a business problem. So I will say, I do like how this person has their portfolio in GitHub. I don't like how they have all of their projects in one repository. It's a little confusing, but they do have a readme page. So, okay, they are a little organized. They do have links in here to Google Collab. That is good. But I'm looking at their projects and we have ramen ratings, Pokemon stats, goblins and ghosts, Disneyland. Okay, actually Disneyland could be realistic if you wanna work at Disney, I take that back. But for me, this portfolio at a first glance is kind of screaming newbie, sample data set, doesn't really have any real experience. That's just my first impression without even looking at anything. And I truly believe that the reason why is because all these data sets are kind of like fun and a little silly. We have Pokemon and ramen. And I think those things are great to learn, especially for something you're excited about and passionate about. It's so cool to have a wild card project in your portfolio that's just something really fun that you enjoy. But in this job market, we should be a little more selective with the projects that we choose to put in our portfolio. It's okay if you learn on these types of data sets, but in your portfolio, I would really recommend choosing an industry specific project. So if you want to work in healthcare, choose something around insurance or vaccines or disease prevention. If you want to work in finance, choose something around stocks or loan approvals. If you want to work in tech, choose something around products and launches. Because if you actually choose projects that are based on a real business problem, Problem, that's gonna help you stand out to hiring managers, especially if it's in the same industry as the job you're applying for. Imagine you're applying for a data analyst position in a finance company and you have a finance project with a finance data set versus a Pokemon data set. Do you see the difference? Like sure, it's fun, but you should make sure you're showcasing your best work in your portfolio. That's actually gonna help you stand out and get noticed by hiring managers because you wanna make it so easy for them to envision you working on their team and solving their their team's problems, which are likely nothing to do with Pokemon and ramen. Okay, no hate at all. This person did organize everything in GitHub. They do have a readme page. Everything is clearly linked. So I'm also gonna give them a seven out of 10 because they don't have separate repositories for all the projects and the data sets are just not realistic. And again, I chose public portfolios to look at and use for this video. So if I chose yours, I'm sorry, but also you're welcome for the free feedback. Let me know what you think below. Avoiding all of these mistakes shows that you can think like a senior data analyst from day one. But here's the thing, one good project isn't enough to stand out from thousands of other candidates in this job market. You need to actually know which projects are gonna be most valuable to hiring managers. So head on over to part one, where I show the top three projects that you need in your data analytics portfolio and grab my free three-step data analytics roadmap below. This was part two of my killer data analytics portfolio series. I'll put the playlist below so you can watch all the episodes. Sending you lots of big data energy, bye.